Hallelujah. We rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Yes. We choose to rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing the song, I'm no longer a slave to fear. We are not going to sing the whole song, but just the first verse, and then I will open in prayer.
in the way with us. Anoint his vocal cords. Anoint him, Lord. Give him wisdom. Give him enlightenment. Give him empowerment in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for the praise and worship, Lord. It's not for us. It's for you. It's about you. Take lead, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
worship you this morning. Let us open our eyes, our spiritual eyes, and see him. And see him for who he is. He is the king of glory. Open the gates. Let the king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord mighty vessel. Hallelujah. He's here this morning. He's here to encounter us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve, you deserve the glory.
of God. You are God's choice. You are God's choice. Hallelujah. Please God. To think of a God. Father and creator of the universe. Chose you. Yet sinners, God demonstrates his love towards us in this, in that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What a God. What an amazing God. What a wonderful Father. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good morning, everybody. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Christ. Amen. It's good to be in church. It's good to be in the house of God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm so glad to be in the house of God this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, greetings, everybody, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Christ, grace and peace be multiplied towards you. The knowledge of Christ. Now this morning, I'd like to welcome everybody in the presence of the Lord. Um, I don't see any first-time visitors, but welcome to everybody. It's good to be in church this morning. Amen. You in your home, welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. Well, this morning, I'd like to go on with the series that we are covering, um, Kingdom Dynamics. And I think we're covering part four this morning. And I want you, if you would, please go with me in your Bibles to the book of Hosea, chapter number 4. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and when you there, you say Amen. Now, okay, before I go on, I'd just like to apologize for the uh, projector. We have a problem with the internet connection this morning, so it's a bit difficult for us to connect so that we can project, but we praise God, it will be resolved. Amen. Amen. Alright, so the book of Hosea, and then I'd like you to go with me to Mark's Gospel chapter 4 and just keep your finger there and say Mark's Gospel chapter 4 chapter number 4. Many of you are familiar with the scripture. I covered it, I think, last week and I think the preceding week. And I'd like you to read verse number 6 for me. At the count of three. One, two, three. Can you 
read it one more time. Financial problems in the world, the solution is Jesus. All the health problems, the solution is Jesus. Jesus is the solution to every problem in this world. That's why you and I have been chosen by God. Chosen. Chosen. You are chosen. Chosen by God. But you've got to grow in the knowledge of Him. In Mark's Gospel chapter 4, we find Jesus speaking a parable. 
about the sower and the seed and the types of ground that the seed fell on. And then Jesus in verse number 11, I want to, I want to point, actually focus on this one. He says, the Bible says, and he, Jesus, said to his disciples, to you it has, okay, you read it for me. One, two, go, read it. But to 
today is better than yesterday. It's better than last week. Come and talk to me every day. Your life is only getting better. It doesn't get better. Yes, challenges will come. Listen, challenges will visit you. Guaranteed. But the purpose of the challenge, the purpose of the challenge is to spread your faith. Oh, Jesus, talk to me, somebody. Listen, what made David famous? What made David famous? David was just a shepherd boy looking after sheep in the back of the field somewhere. Nobody knew about Joseph. I'm sorry, about David. Nobody knew about David. Nobody knew about him. But what made him famous? Goliath. Were it not for Goliath, nobody would have known about David. Because once David slew Goliath, then the people began to sing. Saul slew thousands, but David tens of thousands. People, be, people heard about this David. They heard about this young man. What made Israel famous? The hardship they had with the Egyptians. And the fact that they faced the sea before them and crossed it. And the Egyptians tried, but they couldn't. You see, to you it has been known. It's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. The nation of Israel were in covenant with God. And God revealed his way to them. He said, go through Moses, my cry is done unto me, stretch forth thy hand. Moses stretches out his hand, the sea is part. And instantaneously, in, listen, instantaneously, the ground was dry. And Israel walked through. The Egyptians tried to do what the Israelites did. But they couldn't, the water closed up on them and they drowned. The horse and its rider were slain in the sea. And everybody got to hear about it. So that's my message to you this morning. It doesn't matter what you're going through. That challenge is about to make you famous. How else will they know that there is a God who is with you unless you are in the fire? Because when you're in the fire, somebody is watching you and then they see the fourth man in your fire and they can recognize that there is a God in heaven and he is God in heaven, God on earth, he's God over all. They will get to know your God through your hardship. Talk to me, somebody. Everybody wants a miracle, but nobody is prepared to pay the price. You want the miracle, but you're not prepared to pay the price. You want that experience Moses had. You want that experience David had. You want that experience Daniel had. But when it's presented to you, you cry about it. Come on, talk to me, somebody. When it's presented to you, you cry about it. Make your boast in God. Jesus says it has been given to you the, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. You see that word, to know. It's a Greek, the original Greek, Greek is epignosis. To you, epignosis has been given. That word epignosis, that word know, it means to come to know, to come to realize. It's a coming to know something. It's a coming to learn something. It's a coming to understand something. Hence you find in 1 Peter, let us go there quickly. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So Rabbi Shara Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now, you there first Peter chapter one. I'm sorry, second Peter chapter one. Verse number three. Before I go there, let me 
Let me share something with you. You see, when you, you are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, you find many times people do things, but they just do it for the sake of doing it, but not knowing why they do it. An illustration I'd like to give you is an account of a, of a, of a young lady who got married and she was making roast. Like she was making roast. So maybe as I share the story, mothers, share this with your daughters. Share with them why you do certain things. So this woman, every time she would make roast, she would cut off the end of the roast. Cut it off, put it away, and then she just cooked that. So one day her husband asked her and said, but listen, what is the reason for cutting off the end of the roast? She said, I don't know. My mother always did this. So he prompted her to ask her mother. And she asked the mother and said, Mom, please tell me, what is the reason for always cutting off the roast when you're cooking roast? And the mother said, my child, I don't know. I'll have to ask your grandmother. So they phoned up the grandmother and they asked the grandmother. They said, Grand, why is it every time we cook roast in the family, we cut off the end? And we only cook the bit that we cut. The other one we put away. The grand said, my children, I really don't know. We'll have to ask your great-grandmother. So they go to the great-grandmother and they ask the great-grandmother. Great-grandmother, why is it every time we cook roast in the family, we cut off the end, we put, it, we put that one piece away and then we cook just that portion. The great grandmother said, my children have you not realized, don't you know? I used to do that because the pot was too small for the roast. <laughs> you see this? So this thing came down in the family as a tradition. But they didn't realize why they do it. And it's the same in the church. Listen, we all come from some form of religious background. Yeah. Right? And then we find you come to church and then you become churchy. You become churchy. I mean, everybody says amen, I say amen. Everybody says praise the Lord, I say praise the Lord. Everybody says praise, I say praise. Everybody claps their hand, I clap my hand. Everybody sow, so I sow. Everybody prays, so I pray. But we do it because we see it. But listen, Jesus did not come and give us religion. The world is full of religion. There's enough religion in the world. Jesus came to give us life. You see, the difference between Christianity and religion is this. Religion is man seeking God. I remember when I was in religion. I was also religious. We were all there. You did certain things because you just thought that it, it, would, it would make you a better person and better yet it will give you right standing with God. God will see it. God will recognize it. You try to get God's attention. Christianity is different. Christianity is God seeking humanity. That's the difference. God seeking humanity. God wanting fellowship. God wanting relationship with man. You see, when God created man, he created, that was the purpose of man's creation, was fellowship with God. God had created everything that man would ever need. And then he put man in the garden for him to have fellowship with man. But then Satan came along and with his lies, he got man into thinking that he's not good enough. Come and talk to me. It's like you find, you know, 
even in your workplace, the devil will come with a lie. You're not good enough for this job. You're not good enough for this position. Or in your business, you're not good enough for this type of business. Come and talk to me. He comes with that lie. He comes with that suggestion. But don't take thought of it. Don't take thought of it. You are God's choice. God chose you. God chose you. Say this. God chose me. He chose you to have fellowship with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So God chose you to have fellowship with you. That's why we perish for the lack of knowledge. There's so many things that have been given to the church. So many things. That if we fully understood it, and we understood the power of it, we'd see the results. If you knew the power of words, you'd choose your words carefully. If you knew what you can say, listen, words is power. The Bible says the power of life and death by way, the tongue. So if you knew the power of words, you'd watch your language. If you knew the power of words, you'd understand how to activate angels. Because the Bible says the angel of the Lord can camp about the righteous. We sing that song, even though I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. So if you understood it, listen, there's only one language angels understand, and that's the word of God. There's no other thing you can do to activate an angel. An angel responds to the word of God. So if you understood it, then you would start speaking the word. And when you speak the word, you see how angels start carrying out the word for you on your behalf. There are ministering spirits given to the heir of salvation. Talk to me, somebody. If you knew the power of a seed, you would sow it. If you knew the power of the tithe, you would give God what is. Talk to me, somebody. If you knew the power of honor, you would honor your parents. You would honor your parents. You would honor your leaders. You would honor those in authority over you. You would honor God. Let me share a secret with you. The authority that you honor becomes your authority for Jesus. The authority that you honor becomes your authority. You with me? Yeah, the people at work, they may speak bad about, you know, the boss. But because you honor the boss. You honor the boss because you honor God. You see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him. Those who honor Him. It's a secret. If you honor your boss, God will honor you. Who put your boss where your boss is? God. God. You see? So, you find my people perish for the lack of knowledge. You're supposed to be promoted, but you can't get promoted because you dishonor the boss. Talk to me, somebody. Honor. Honor. If you knew the power of honor, if you knew the power of prayer, you would pray more and talk less. If you knew the power of prayer, you would pray more over your challenges and talk less about them. Because you keep telling everybody how difficult life has become, how difficult things have become, and guess what? It's just getting more difficult. Every time you look at that, that's why you find people who say, Ah, oh, you know, back in the day, in our days, it was never like this. It's just getting worse. You're speaking it. 
You know, it's like something happens in town or somewhere something is happening and people get excited and then you find someone saying, oh, I'm dying to go. I'm dying to go. Guess what? You're going to die going. The power of words. If you need the power of meditation, oh, Jesus. God speaks to Joshua. He says, meditate on this book. Meditate on this word. Day and night. Meditate on it day and night. It means in the good times and the bad times. Meditate on the word. Don't wait for the challenge to come before you. Meditate on the word so that when the challenge comes, you've got something to fight back. Oh, Jesus, talk to me, somebody. You see, when you have that word, it could be a sickness. It could be lack. It could be anything. But when you're meditating on the word, you're building yourself up. You're changing. Listen, with, the more you meditate on the word, the word meditate, the word meditate, from, you know, in the Bible, when you translate it, it means he who utters unto himself. You see, meditation is not crossing your legs and closing your eyes and singing a chant. That's not meditation. That's garbage. Meditation is taking the word of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not rise. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not rise. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not rise. You see, you may be in one, but because you've been meditating on this, when one comes, you know already the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not rise. The Lord is my healer. By his stripes I was healed. When sickness comes, you know you were healed. So you can... God who created the light from the darkness. God created light from where? Darkness. Okay. Let me ask those in the medical profession, and many of you will also know this. If a snake bites you, if a snake bites you, right? When a snake bites you, what do they do? What do they do? You go to the hospital. What do they do? The first thing they want to know is what type of snake bit you. Because when they know the type of snake, they know that they have venom from that snake. And that same venom they use, they inject into. Come and talk to me. See, some of you may not have known this, but that's what they do. They use that same venom. They inject. So, what am I saying to you is the solution to your problem is in the problem itself. The healing, come and talk to me. The healing, the healing. Come and talk to me, somebody. It's there. Listen, it's there. The fact that you, you, you know, you are in want or in need or in lack, the solution is in it itself. Come and talk to me. The solution to feeding the multitudes was in what they had there. It was there. The widow with the oil, the solution was there. To you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the king. You just understand, God is going to come through. The people outside will say, what you mean? I, listen, I know God is going to come through. I don't, I, I don't care what happens. Because the Bible says, He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So, you have that embedded in your heart. It doesn't matter what happens to you. You're just speaking the word. So, if you knew the power of prayer, you would pray more. Because if you have something, a challenge, you would be in such a state that you can't wait to tell God about it to see what God is going to do with it. If you knew that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
He came not to condemn or judge the world, he came to save the world. If you knew that, you would judge less, condemn less, and you would focus more on winning souls. He came to win souls. He who wins souls is one. If you knew that, if you knew the power of praise, you would praise more. Because when you're faced with a Jericho, something you can't get in, you'd start praising God about it. Because you know God is going to do something with it. Listen, when Jericho collapsed, the walls didn't just fall over. The foundations of those, the foundations were moved. Because there's no other foundation that can be there except Jesus, except God himself. You're the power of praise, you praise more. You see, there's so many things. If you need the power of praying in tongues, you pray in tongues more. Because he who prays in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God. In the spirit, he's speaking mysteries unto God. He's speaking mysteries unto God. You may, listen, the people around you may not understand it. The devil doesn't understand it. But God understands. Your spirit man understands. He says, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the spirit, you're building up your most holy faith. Some, listen, you must try this. Try this. When you're tired, you really can't pray. You know, we get like that. We get that. And you can't pray. Switch over to tongues. Switch over to tongues. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. I remember one day, I was so tired, and, you know, I was helping Pastor Sharon in the house. You know, and we had quite a bit of laundry. I said, okay, leave it out, out of the eye. So, hey, listen, it's not a shame to help your wife in the house. Help your wife. Hallelujah. So I was tired. And I started eyeing. And I, all of a sudden, I said, you know what, I'm going to start praying. And I started. You know, and I started praying in tongues. All of a sudden, I started singing in tongues. You know, singing in tongues. And, you know, and then I was moving with the, you know, the eye. It was, you know, singing in tongues. And the eye was, the eye was dancing with me. Before I knew it, when I looked again, there was nothing there to me. There's nothing left. I even asked, is there anything else? <laughs> Come on, give me a praise. <laughs> you see what? Listen. You know, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, your spirit takes over your body. You see, that's why the Bible says, walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit. When you pray in the spirit, you'll be amazed. And you know, I'm just thinking of it now. That by doing that, I believe as I was touching those girls, there was an anointing for you. Come on. Maybe while you pray, listen, you want your children to be saved. Start. That's a point of contact. Listen, if they could take handkerchiefs from the apostles, lay them on the stick and have them become them. You want to change your spouse, you can never change your spouse. Only God can. So when you dream that, or you dream that, or even maybe washing the plates. Huh? You can start praying, release an anointing there. When they touch it, something will happen. Something will happen. Something will happen. What am I sharing with you? The lack of knowledge, that's why people of God perish. 
because of ignorance. I just shared with you about that lady that was cutting the roast all the time. And so it is in the church. Everyone lifts up their hands. I lift my hands up. I don't know why. But now we understand that, you know, it's because I worship God, I honor Him. That's because I say, Lord, as I lift up my hands, I'm opening myself. Listen, this is symbolic of an empty. I'm emptying myself. I'm an empty vessel. Fill me. This is symbolic of, Lord, I cannot help myself, but I need you to pick me up. That's why I lift up my hands. Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to close shortly. 2 Peter chapter 1. And let me read from verse 2. He says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him, you see that? Through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Hallelujah. Then he goes on, on to, you know, adding to your faith. Hallelujah. He speaks of the virtues and he says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For, I want you to highlight this, for if these things are yours, and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That word knowledge, it's not the same epignosis in that coming to know, coming to learn, coming to perceive. No. That word knowledge is ginosko. Ginosko means accurate and precise knowledge. You see, when you come to accurate and precise knowledge of Christ, that is where you come to realize that He is the Son of God. You come to realize that He is my Savior. He is my Redeemer. He is my Deliverer. He is my strong tower. He is my ever-present help in my time of need. He is my life. Come and talk to me. When you come to that, listen, you will neither be unfruitful nor barren. It means knowing Jesus, you can only be fruitful. You see, many people, they, you know, really, God help the church. Many people, when they hear about prosperity and that people are just running to church because they think they'll prosper and it's because of the cars and house. That's not prosperity. It begins with Jesus. John says, I pray that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Prosperity begins with your soul. Doesn't belong to Jesus. When it belongs to Jesus, you can only prosper. Talk to me somebody. Hallelujah. 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 You see Jacob and Esau. Esau was foolish. He had it, but he sold it. Jacob, he knew if I can get the roots, I'll always bear fruit. If I can get the root, I'll always bear fruit. The root is the root of Jesse. That's Jesus. Jacob went to Laban's house. What happened? Laban prospered. Wherever Jacob went, he prospered. Everything he set his hand to do, he prospered. It was a mystery. Even when they were fighting, they, 
Jacob says, watch it. Jacob says to Laban, he says, listen, I'll take the feeble, I, I will take the faulty stock. I'll take the, the ones that have blemishes, the ones that there's, there's, there's something wrong with. I'll take those, you take the best. You take the best. You see, when you understand, when you know the power of unity, you would never want to be divided. You would never want to have quarreling and bickering and fighting. When you pursue peace, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. So Jacob goes, he takes the worst. And he goes and he puts them there. And then what happened? Then he put sticks there. But the water, you know, where they would drink water, where they were fed. And what would happen? Every time they went there, they conceived. Jacob's livestock started increasing. Laban's, Abraham, and Lot. There was a quarrel. Lot wanted the best. Abraham said, You take the best. You see, that's why. You know, sometimes you are crying and you're bickering and moaning and murmuring and complaining about something that you thought was so good that someone stole from you. Let them have it. Get over it. Even if you settle with nothing, it's fine. What did Jesus say? He asked you for a cloak, give him your tunic. Oh Jesus, it's a mystery. I was sitting in church one day, and as we were praying, the Lord said to me, Take off your shoes. There's a young man. This is the daughter of your son. The Lord, I was kneeling, I was praying somewhere there. And the Lord said to me, some of you will remember this. The Lord said to me, Take off your shoes and give it to this young man. I didn't know for what reason. But I took off my shoes. And I went to the young man, and when I got there, I said, the Lord said to give you, and Sister Dolly looks and she says, my word, my son wore his slippers to church. But it's not about the slippers, but there was a purpose, a divine purpose for it. And when we fitted, my shoe fitted his foot. And after service, before I got to the door, the Lord already, the Lord blessed me. The Lord blessed me to go buy another pair of shoes. The Lord moved somebody, somebody, and they came to me and said, Pastor, the Lord just said you need a new pair of shoes.
That was at 7.30. At 10 o'clock that morning, there's a man who came to my workplace. He had the cash. That's only God. That's God. That's God. I'm not trying to tell you to start selling this stuff, you know. But when you listen, when you when you have fellowship with God, God can talk to you like that. You can see things happen. I was working somewhere and it was really difficult and nasty. And I was invited for an interview. I went. The interview went well. Everything was well. And as I walked out of that interview, the Lord said to me, you have a yoke currently on you that can, that can bend. But if you take this job, you'll be putting a heavier yoke upon yourself that you will not carry. I got to my workplace. That very same day, the person phoned me and said, listen, you got the job, when can you start? I said, sorry, I don't want the job. So did I know, a year later, the job was no more. You see what I'm sharing with you? God doesn't work in mysterious ways, people. We make God a mystery because we don't want to get to know him. We need to make time for God. We need to make time for the reading, the study, the meditation of the Word of God. So that even when you, when you pray, you'll find all of a sudden, you'll be even praying scripture. You pray the Word. You say the Word. Because then you understand the authority of the Word. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you here, somebody? Let me close with this. First John chapter 4, verse 4. You are of God. You are of God, little children and have overcome them. You are of God. Here the Apostle John is speaking about the spirit of the Antichrist. What is Antichrist? Every Antichrist is everything, every system, every law, every principle, every philosophy that is against Christ. That is against who he is, what he stands for. That is Antichrist. He is the Messiah. He is the light of this world. Christ means the anointed one and he is anointed. The anointed one and his anointing, and his anointing rests upon you. That anointing, that's an enablement, an empowerment upon you to do the work of the kingdom of God. I mean, the writer of Hebrews says, by this time you ought to be teachers, but you become as such as need milk. But strong meat belongs to those who have, who by reason of use, have their senses exercised. See, you've got to exercise the word. Exercise the principles. Exercise it. Listen, it may not work the first time, but you don't give up there. You keep on trying. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You may, come on, talk to me. I mean, you can say, if, I don't know why, but laying on of hands, I lay hands. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Whatever I touch, it will prosper. You speak a word of healing to someone, and they get healed. Maybe you speak the word, you don't see that healing. But don't give up there. You say, 
further. I may not understand it. I may not understand how it works. But if I've seen pastor doing it, and I've seen other pastors doing it, I'm going to do it. God didn't call you to understand how the thing works. He just asked you to exercise it. Exercise it. I mean, talk to me. You're not going to get the muscles unless you exercise. You're not going to be able to run the comrades unless you exercise. So you've got to put some time. You've got to put some effort. Talk to me, son. Hallelujah. He says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. You've overcome the spirit of Antichrist. Because you recognize Christ. You recognize him as coming in the flesh. You recognize him as the son of God. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you. Come and talk to me. Than he who is in the world. Greater is he, greater is Christ who is in me than the devil that's in the world. The devil may be running chaos in the world, but when you get there, because you understand who you are, when you get there, he knows that he's under your feet. Come and talk to me. The devil knows who he can run a mock with and who he can't. He knows which Christians are crybabies and which ones they. That when I go there, I'm going to burn my fingers. But it's not just a select few. Listen, he's been given to every child of God. He says, you cast out demons and devils in my name. It's all in the name of Jesus. You've been baptized in that name. You've been immersed in that name. You come and talk to me. You become one with that name. When you speak the name of Jesus, talk to me, somebody. There's power that's released. The sons of Steve, I even recognize that they say, yeah, Jesus we know, Paul we know, but who are you? You see, to a non-believer, it'll not work. But to a believer, to a believer, Whatever you do in word, you do it in the name of the Lord. The name of Jesus opens doors. How about you pray to your workplace tomorrow and you say, I'm walking in the name of Jesus. Doors and opportunities may have been closed for you in your workplace, but you can go there and you can say, I'm walking in the name of Jesus. Talk to me, somebody. I'm walking in the name of Jesus. Come and talk to me, somebody. I don't care what Satan tried to bring up against me, but I'm going in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Teaching somebody how to have a good day. When you get to work, Maybe, you know, something happens to try and spoil your day. Don't let that thing make you sour. Don't make that thing make you bitter. You shut off. You go to the bathroom. Jesus. Come on, sister. I'll be back now. I'm just going to pardon my nose. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm trying to teach you how to how to have a great day. How to have a great day. When you get to work, stay away from the people who complain, chat, talk about everybody. Let me tell you something. When you sit at the table where they're discussing other people, as soon as you stand up and turn your back, you become the next topic. Cut away from them. They come and give you a bad report of how it's going in the company or in the workplace. Go powder your nose. You're not really going to powder your nose, you're going to the bathroom, you're going to close the door. As you close the door, understand, when you know the power of prayer, when you know the power of tongues, when you know the power of the name of Jesus, 
say, devil, whatever you're trying to bring up now, that news, that report you brought me now, I send it back to where it comes from. In the name of Jesus. There's no power, no authority over me. I'm a child of the most high God. The word of God says, I am of God. And I've overcome you. Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I dictate in the name of Jesus that word that you brought. It has no power, no authority over me. That is under my foot. That is under my authority. I stand here in the authority of Christ. I'm an ambassador of Christ. I'm a child of the most high God. I'm the head and I'm not the tail. La Bosha, no Hosa, La Bosha, La Bosha. And then you start praying. You pray up yourself. Right? Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't need to be long. It can be three or five minutes. And then you just, you know, you go wash your hands. You want to splash some water. You know. And then you go back and go to your business because you've changed the devil away. Jesus, I don't know. You know, nobody wants this thing. Wherever you are, you are the spiritual director in that place. That's why some of us, we go to our unsafe family and we want to go and try and, you know, you know, force them to be safe. No. You must understand. We, we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, understand, they are under the influence of some spirit. So before you even leave your home to go there, you pray and you speak to those spirits. And you say, listen, take note. Whenever you get there, you always have an argument or you always come back and there's always a problem. There's always an issue. Why? Why? Because they're under the control of another spirit. I'm trying to teach you something. But when you pray about it before you go and you say whatever spirit is operating in that home, or in that place in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are under my authority. Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. He's the Lord of Lords and He's the King of Kings. I trample on serpents and scorpions. So I put you under my control. For as long as I enter that place, you remain silent. You will not speak until I leave. So what you've done? You've bound the strong man. <laughs> you've bound the strong man. And you've come there in the name of the Lord Jesus. So then, listen, when you do that, now the spirit that's in you has suppressed that spirit. You know, there's a man of God, Prophet Lucas Van Benjamin. This down in the and you know these palm readers and those people who are dead that just that walk. Prophet Corvus walked past. You see, no. I'm going to show this thing the power of God. And he said, "You will not speak for as long as I'm dead." And when he got in, the palm readers said, "Show me your hands." And they were. Then they were looking in this glass and he asked, he said, what's wrong? He said, I can't see nothing. He says, yes, that's true because there's nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you know, listen, you carry, listen, the Holy Spirit. You cast out demons and devils. You don't run from them. You cast them out. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you go to your workplace tomorrow, you go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As long as you are there, you bring in His authority there. There's so many things that are that pertain to the kingdom of God that it, you will never come to the realization of it. That's why Jesus even said to his disciples, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. Time wouldn't allow it. That's why you want to come to church. Oh, no amen. amen. <laughs> See, you say come to church. And that's why you've got to come to church. Amen. I need 
drink love and believe. That's why you want to come to church. Jeremy was loud with you. Say that's why you've got to come to church. There are many things that you learn here. The world will not teach you these things. The world doesn't believe in miracles. But when you come to church, we tell you there is such a thing as miracles. When you come to church, listen, you can even go to doc you can go from doctor to doctor, you can go to the greatest doctor. But when the doctor has failed and medical science has failed, they tell you, do you believe in God? That's the last thing they tell you now. They have been with do you believe in God? Well, let's trust God. So you can come here and you can learn about the kingdom of God. We need to preach more on the kingdom. Jesus preached about the kingdom. Jesus didn't preach about money. He didn't preach about money. He preached about the kingdom. Take the money away from the poor, but put the cross of Jesus back. That's what needs to happen. This is where you learn about Jesus. That's why you want to come to church, because this is a classroom. This is where I think the greatest difficulty for any minister is to unschool what the world has schooled you and to school you in the things of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's like a story I'm closing with a little story of a young girl in the school. That's why I say you've got to unschool what you've been schooled. This little girl teachers talking about the biggest animals, she spoke about the biggest fish. And this little girl says, no teacher, not that fish. The biggest fish is the, is the fish that swallowed Uncle Jonah. And the teacher said, you know, she carried on and said, well, um, how do you know? She says, well, when I get to heaven, I'll ask him. And she says, but what if it was never with the biggest fish? She says, well then, when, he gets, when you get to heaven, you can go ask him there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've got to unschool you. We've got to teach you about counting your chickens before they hatch. All those things which be not as though they were. You gotta teach you about carrying all your eggs in one basket, and that basket is the hand of God. That's why you come to church. We can teach you those things. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God. Come on, stand. I want to say this, to say this declaration with me. This week.
Lord God, that you increase them. I pray, Lord, from today that you give them a clearer understanding of your word, that they will grow in the knowledge of you, the knowledge of your word, the knowledge of your laws, O God, that you will not, O Lord God, leave us nor forsake us. That you will not forget our children. That your hand is upon them for good, O God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that in spite of what the world may be saying, our children will advance, our children will prosper in the name of Jesus. Oh God, whatever words of negativity, whatever words of failure, whatever words of doubt were sent, O oh Lord God, into our children and their destinies and their futures, we nullify it in the name of Jesus. We declare, O oh Lord, it shall be well with our children. O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, it shall be well with our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. And it shall be well with us and our family, O oh God. For if God be for us, who can be against us? So we thank you now, O oh Lord God, in your precious name. I pray that you bless and prosper your people. In Jesus' wonderful name, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore in Jesus wonderful name Amen You say you see it all starts with knowledge when you know the power that the blood of Jesus has the power and the authority of the blood. You see the power of that blood operating in your life. If someone here, you, you know, you had some difficult experiences. The things of the past continually, you know, seem to haunt you. The Bible says, purge me with Aesop and I shall be clean indicative of the blood of Jesus, symbolic of his blood. Whatever that memory is that is robbing you from moving forward, you can apply the blood. You can apply the blood. The blood of Jesus will remove every, mem every remembrance of that hurtful experience. The blood of Jesus will eradicate them. If the blood of Jesus can remove your sin as far as the east is from the west, that there be no remembrance of it, how much more do you not think the blood of Jesus can also wash and clear your conscience, clear your mind of the painful memory, the painful passage? Apply the blood of Jesus today. All that will be gone, will be forgotten, it will not hinder you from moving forward. Because the blood of Jesus has ransomed you. The blood of Jesus has set you free. In Jesus' name, Amen. Bless you, family. Have a blessed.